hello everybody, welcome back to the Cuny Clan. We are back here with another winners and losers of the newest servers of all set. This time it is Booster Set Bob Omens Eternal, the first anniversary set of Shadowverse of all English. So we're gonna go the intro again, get right into it. <laughs> Before we actually get started though, I'd like to mention that this is the first anniversary of a Shadowverse Evolved English set, so it's really excited. And it's actually a booster set that's uh, near deep in my heart in terms of personal connection because the first time I actually went to Japan was back in April and that's of last year. And that was actually when the set 5 released in Japan, so it's pretty exciting. Oh, good stuff, for sure. All right. All right, so we start off with, we're going to still go spread back and forth. I think I will say that a general theme is that overall, some classes are just kind of <clears throat> a bit middling, but we have some notable wi uh, winners and losers this time around. Sure, so sure. start it off, we'll, we'll get started with the winners on this side. So right. I think a lot of people have been super hyped on how Abyscraft is going to be. Oh, and yeah. mainly it's because yeah. of two specific ways and even like generalized support right. too. So the thing with Abyscraft is we always like kind of talking that there's been this whole identity crisis behind Abyscraft where part of it was to be, I want to take damage on my own turn to get benefits and the other part is I want to fill up my cemetery for benefits, right? But yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of really... like the split in the right. actual digital game, but, but... except in Shadowcraft, you actually have to deal with building up shadows. Right. And, and, and tokens, the... co tokens were on the right, we allowed to contribute to that in the digital game. Mm. Whereas here, they don't. Now, that's like a very powerful part about Shadowcraft is we have all these different tokens mm. that will just fill up that shadow count incrementally, but we don't have that in Shadowverse Evolve because tokens, no matter what class you're in, they just disappear when they change its zones, right? <laughs> and I think it's really great that they're finally starting to do some bit of divergence. I always like to see how Abyscraft can go towards multiple different archetypes. So this is really one of the main uses because you got one archetype that could be built is the Lust Engine, which basically you can start utilizing the Sanguine a lot more. Right, right. It's very much Sanguine has always geared towards aggro slash mid-range in general, I feel. And Lust is very good at just getting pressure on the board, pressure on the opponent. Valgaric with Storm, you have Disciple of Lust for that easy kind of like Ambling Wraith on steroids. And Wing so Lust can just also help recur your Valgaric when she gets milled or destroyed, whatever, you'll know, recur her back and all that stuff. Serving the Lust being a 2 cost 3 attack to boot, that in with Sanguine is pretty powerful. Also, some shenanigans. Wing so Lust is like very good to really enable Sanguine multiple times. It's a choose 2 abilities of 3, and a lot of them just do damage to yourself so you can really enable some crazy shenanigans with your sanguine cards from both Omens Eternal and Legacy cards, you know, think Dark Shanger, Skeleton Fighter, etc. Yeah, and you have a lot of different enablers too as well, like Razor Claw, Wraith of course. It's a lot of different avenues where Lust really is popular. I think that's pretty much it on that side, but what I'm really excited for, excited for Silence Engine, or as I call it, Hand Shred, because it's probably one of the better big control decks that you can play, right. just because you get that main player and player interaction. For sure, for sure. So we already have um, Booster Set 1, Advent of Genesis, Craze Execution, who already did that. You know, you get yeah. to choose the card for taking two life. He doesn't grow bigger in stat lines like the majority of evolves would. But unless you look into your opponent's hand and just take wherever you want out of there, you're gonna have Azazel from Booster Set 2, Reign of Bahamut, who will discard at random, Dark Angel Olivia mm -hmm. from Neutral, who will discard. Your opponent chooses that time along with Nice Nature, at last words from the Uma Musume collab set. But this time we have the likes of Ruling Eye, Omen of Silence, we have Silent Purge, and we can capitalize from August with the likes of Servant of Silence, who will then deal burn damage along with setting up Necro Charge, because you know, in general, Necro Charge has always been more of this mid range control end of the spectrum. It was to kind of put cards into the cemetery slowly but surely, 
to enable your Necro Charge 10 plus abilities, you know, Gank Demon Lord, Ektar from Booster Set 4, Cosmic Victos, and so on. And it's so very much based for a very nice control deck. The fact that Ruling Eye, Omega Silence, increases the cost of your opponent's spells by one deck becomes so powerful against like, pretty much every class you could think of. Especially Rune. Yeah, especially Rune, but like, <laughs> literally go down class by class, right? Forest Craft, imagine yeah. having to pay 2 for Nature Skyguns. In Starcraft, imagine having to pay 2 for Umbrella Fury or 4 for Heroic Entry. Or mm -hmm. in Runecraft, Inside for 2, Fates 10 for 4, etc, right? And I also will say, if you're going second too, this is a very easy turn of 3 play. So you can just yeah, get yeah. the Evolve already shre uh, shredded out. So. True, true. And, and the fact that Thunderous Roar, the, the card refers to Ruling Eye's weapon that's actually not in the original game. I'm not talking about almost if you want to bring up. There's a lot of cards that were F are not in the original digital game. So Thunderous Roar being a flexible discard one at random or deal three to your choice of opponent's power. That is so powerful. You know, it lets you control the board or hand depending on how you see fit as a silence control of this player. And people, i even seen some people already crafting their own list. They've been trying to add some spicy stuff like Soul Dealer added into there. I think they really want to put that super high curve and really you know, capitalize you know, on that mid-game. Right there, Soul Dealer has kind of been the foundation of control of this in Shadowverse Evolve, I feel. The fact that it can calm down, it's a ward, it, yes, it does three damage to you, but if you could capitalize on him to eat up something kind of big, that's to have Aura, look at you, Dark Dragoon Forte with Evolved. And as long as you have those kinds of properties, you just Mega Plus, and you could go two for one, heal up, have a 7x ward, that's pretty nice, not gonna lie. The only trade-off is, though, is that if you're playing against the mirror, it, it might be a tough time for both of you. Because both of you are tr it's basically to capitalize who has the more shredded hands, and yeah, who, and the fact that who has the more Necro Charge. Because, yeah, Ruling Eye, him, Ruling Eye himself has Necro Charge 10 do something, which is very funny. I feel, and I think other people feel too, that you could do this hybrid, silence, lust hybrid, that because like a very good going second aggro deck. I know it's not kind of where to go. I know it's kind of where to go aggro and going second in this game, but trust me, it works. It's been tested, it's been proven. You get to just deal all this space damage from Valneric, from Apostle of Silence, from Serving of Silence, and at the same time, you just make it harder for your opponent to play the game, so your board pressure and face damage pressure is not that easily answered. Definitely on that too. But anyways, let's go on to that second point like there's another class that really notably improved and this one honestly might be one of my favorites and it has to be havencraft oh, um yes. really i feel like a lot of people kind of know this but on top of what people kind of didn't like within the thing it get that gets ramped up you also get control gets ramped up and you got a lot of different avenues too with the repose engine. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So we start with another than Marwin. Omega, very Omega, annoying card. Omega, Omega repose, I, I will annoying honestly card. admit that this might this was one of my least favorite cards ever playing against. <laughs> back right. then, so, so 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 the fact that this guy could become it goes from a four cost four four to a eight eight with ward and aura for no reason, and mm -hmm. the fact that you could you could go unironically skip your turn to. Ramp and heal three and draw a card. It's kind of like a draconic fervor from Dragoncraft in Ring of Bahamut on steroids in a way. And while it's not a smart idea to do this on turn four per se, because you know we're in a very unga bunga mentality here in English, doing this in the later turns of the game that could be very powerful. You could hold up play points for the likes of your spicy quakes. You know, think surefire bully on turn six or. Mm -hmm. Execution or Aquas like on turn 8 while threatening this 8-8 eight, eight aura ward body that healed you 3, gave you a card, and put yourself at more play points for later. That's just insanity. You don't even need to ward this too. Uh, you swing out an 8 damage despite giving them 2 turns. You basically have to give them an extra turn for them to swing their damage to go tra uh, trade it off. For, for sure, and, and the fact that we have, an again, another Shadowverse Evolve exclusive card in the Saviors that allows you to either tutor for the sky at will for just one play point, or you just That's manage crazy. a very <laughs> tiny guy for one play point, you know, and Joey snipe on steroids basically. You can mm -hmm. just go 
screw your necrochar, screw your last words, etc. That's why Marlin is going to be a really oh, annoying card. I, I Especially if you're, playing in the sh if you're playing in the shop challenges, too, for the buy cards of Grand Showdown, this is going to be yep, something them showdown that challenge you might probably get, you sure might see this. Buy cards and Dark Alice alt arts, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be really tricky, though, if you have to play against this. <laughs> it's, it's it, really it'll be a very field. difficult matchup because this this is this is very much the epitome of I'm gonna play on uh, both players' turns. And yeah. more wrong guy, we also have Apostle of Repos who could evolve to just banish a reserved as an unrefreshed in stand position enemy forward while recovering two key play points. At the beginning of your opponent's main phase, you know, I said never about repost. Repost is I low key and very passive on my own turn. I mm -hmm. FR play on the opponent's turn. Yeah, and then that's the main play style that I like. I like the hard control aspect, so we, I, it's great to see that too. And attach this as well to Hi Girl, Deusex Machina. I'm really excited that Deusex Machina is finally here. Right. Um, because so crazy enough, a lot of people are like the additional game will become other classes. Throughout the game. <laughs> What's really funny too is not many people are thinking of playing Deus Ex Machina in the next set, despite it being the best Float Haven play style, which is one I'm the most excited right. for. So, probably. So she, in she's, she's flexible, you know, she either tries to recycle your hand and draw new cards, or she recovers four play points. Again, we already mentioned mm -hmm. a lot of very powerful quicks. Two play points for a surefire bullet. Four play points for execution or Aquas, right? These are these are all quicks you get to actually play on the opponent's turn. It's kind of yeah. insanity. And four six on the five costs that you investing on turn five or later, that's actually not all that bad. I will also say that the first thing that I also saw when actually when this card came on the website is like a me ruling saying if I choose one option option one when my hand is empty, do I still draw four cards? Yes. So basically you can spend your hand. Yeah, maybe while just, plays down, you spend your hand. Your hand, quote, your hand of zero you just draw four, four cards, cards, which is an absolute <laughs> yeah. banger, right? You guys talk about more of these. This already happened or this this is the thing. This will happen, you know, in Paragons on the car scene, but that will come two months from now. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, there's a lot of different stuff that Havencraft has, and also, as a fellow Fable player, you also get more stuff, can you believe it? Yeah, yeah, so, while a lot of the card pool for Havencraft specifically is geared towards control, heal up, survive, we have, for us Fable players who want to kill the opponent yesterday, we have Demon's Epitaph, this two somehow, cost, yeah, this somehow. Two <laughs> yes, Fable still. Yeah, only screw does. Andromeda. We have. Screw, we no, have and Andromeda still babe. matters. And Andromeda still matters. We're going to go over that later on. But, yeah, yeah true, Demon's true. Epitaph. Now, unlike most Evolves, he doesn't cost evil points. He just simply costs us a card from our hand. Wait, we're going to discard our hand with Hunky Dunky Evolve anyway? <laughs> yes, that's why it's great. He becomes yeah, it's, a 3 crazy. 4. Bang with last words, burn two. Yeah, that, that's an absolute insanity. Like the right the there problem too. with Fable Haven during BPL4 format was if we went up against Heal Control Dragon or Necro Charge Abyss, who had access to Ezra Field, we almost always auto lose. But now mm -hmm. that we have an answer to Ezra Field, we actually are back in the game. We are back. And again, you can, even if you don't get the Andromeda, you can just play Humpty Dumpty, nuke the board, and you nuke this Demon's Epitaph if you keep it alive on the Evolve, which most of the time you're probably not, but... <laughs> um, no, that, that's... We went Demon's Epitaph to die, so like, our opponent takes the two, we went one for one, they took the two... Well, you basically take one. five, you take five, basically, because of Humpty Dumpty and... Yeah, Epitaph yeah, Epitaph even, Epitaph. even better! <laughs> Yeah, I know. So you basically do like five damage for your opponent on your board state. Yeah, that yeah, that's definitely not gonna get annoying. Anyways, a card that I guess I'm gonna definitely try out is Ancient Protector. This card is basically Guardian Angel from Magic the Gathering. As well as this is on the board, you cannot lose. The opponent cannot win. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a lot of different stuff. Underrated thing I've actually been talking with someone who plays Amulet Haven too is there's this ward called Hakrabi, I think is what it's called. Hakrabi. Which is a which is a three which is a four three ward. That's pretty good styling for a three. And then yeah, you yeah, can four, basically dish an amulet to get a search one, and there's a lot of good search one amulets like right. Guardian Sun and the usual Sacred Plea. You forgot about a key one in the gemstone deck. Yeah, there's that too. The, there's a lot of different the jewel shrine. Which works very well with with this card. Yeah. So, so overall, so this this means that this means that 
Gemstone Haven Gux no longer need to play Maceo Goto from the Umabusa Mesa. That's kind of like the theme that we're getting on, is that the great thing about what really makes a winner, I think in basically both of our eyes, is if the entire spectrum of archetypes get supported. And we'll get to that when we get to Loser too. But anything oh, else you want to say on... Oh, um, yeah, we have to talk about more um, like Coil Crack yeah. imports with Ancient Amplifier. You get a token that is a... You get a Mystic Artifact token, it's a ward that just draws one on Fanfare. And you can also pay, pay one, engage, put a cemetery, give a token, plus two, plus one. That could go very well with the likes of Holy Tiger tokens, Holy Falcon tokens, even a Mystic Artifact, that ain't all that bad. The fact that Fable, Control, and Big Range, or Aggro, Haven, as we want to call it here and there, they all benefit from this card pool for Haven Crash specifically. It's going to be really important because uh, later sets with Haven is going to be more specific playstyle. But, uh, but I, I would say overall, okay, Control got 70% of what we wanted, and the mid range and aggro and fable, they all kind of like split it, split the remaining 30 percent like almost evenly, so to say. All right, so I get to the last point here as a winner is going to be the general neutral pool because I am we are some very surprised of, of the neutrals right, that are really right. popping out for for sure for sure. So we first yeah, have this Europe. one. This one you're getting. You can take the floor on this right. one. So so the Europe and Omega ones like very good for like very traditional aggro decks. You just empty your hand really quickly. You know, take the likes of. Aggro Abyss or Aggro Sword of any flavor gonna go more the sword later on. The fact mm -hmm. that this guy rewards you for emptying your hand and doing uncontested damage to both face and board is really insane. He has mm -hmm. rush and he, he can just like really really go ballistic. He's he's pretty nice. On top of that we have Fina Dynamite Daredevil who could as a two cost three two a very good stats by the way, mind you. Either one or two choices, you could grab a cost one forward from top five, and for Fable Guest specifically, that's a lot of things. That could be Atrosperia, Andromeda, if you still play him for some reason, Goblin, and... I get the Goblin Echo Prince, that's what you're talking about. We saw it last set. <laughs> we did, yes. Again, for Starcraft, there's a lot of one cost, Perseus, Quick Blager, Ninja Trainee, you name it. In Abyss Craft, you have Rambling Eight Wraith, Skeleton Fighter. You definitely play Goblin in Abyss Craft for aggro, like the possibilities are endless. Yeah. And you and if not those folks, this could also be a semi anti aggro card, you know, Fable kind of like the aggro mirror, so to say. You just take mm -hmm. out one of their cost ones. Easy. Mm -hmm. Boom. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we get to Genelise, which is yeah, actually a drain. Uh, yeah, we have not seen a drain. Shine a spotlight in a while. So. Right, so, so you huh. so you would if you bought into the Abyss Craft trial deck, that like video like right there on that, <laughs> you really would have not seen Drain all that much, period. But yes, mm. Killing at least, Omen the Craving, four costs, three five, with Drain. Very nice. You're gonna find that with the way she reach, she's very much meant to be a we're gonna play to the tenth turn cycle and you are going to like it. Sort of yeah. playstyle, like we could say, hard control sort of deal. And first one, you could fanfare, pay a cost of three to trigger your deck for two specific cards Apostle of Craving and Craving mm -hmm. Splendor. Book out to your EX area, and we're gonna go over them in a bit. And yeah. the fanfare would be act fanfare if both players have a maximum play point count of 10, so that's why I say 10th turn cycle, right? Because mm -hmm, yeah. not everyone's rapping, not everyone's dragon crap, or not everyone is repost control, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Draw three cards, and then mm -hmm. we go to the PDK, where each time you play yeah. any neutral card, a follower, a spell, an amulet, a token, yeah. deal one to each leader. And the reason why we stress this is because a lot of people have kind of... So it's not a really meme per se, but they've always wondered, can you build something with neutral crap? This is arguably probably the best option. This is... Here. It's ironic because... Alright, I'm gonna do a little bit of history real quick. Originally, in a digital game, all the Fable stuff, Alice, Wonderland Explorer, Tim Soldier, Marcus State, etc. They were meant to support this idea of neutral craft, which is why the game in digital became kind of degenerate before... Kimura and Kowag, we need to fix this right now sort of deal. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, it's why a lot of people call it like one of the worst formats of all time. Because if, mm -hmm. if everyone's just the same, who cares, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but luckily we kind, of, we kind of fixed that with Haven getting the bulk of the good stuff, Forest mm -hmm. getting a good amount, the rest of the bulk, and everyone else suffering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we now end up with Gilda Lewis being the facilitator of a neutral playstyle that favors longer games versus yeah. the shorter games that the neutral stuff in Wonderland Tracing and Digital Game Does that make sense? Yeah, and bear in mind too is that neutral you don't have to just play like, do like an all neutral kind of like the other classes. You can add like, a tiny engine of any class you want. So right. there's definitely something so, for so people. Going back to Apostle of Craving and Chris Butter, these both have a similar ability of if we are to play them while we control Gilding the Least Omega Craving. They are free. Mm. They are three costs to begin with, so they, they get cost minus three. That means they are free. That's pretty good. Mm. So we have a free choo choo in a possible craving. First of all, he fanfares, give something else rush, pretty nice. And if we want to go even further, evolve for one to deal something three damage and give it three attack. In additional care, craving is all about deal damage to something and then power it up. If possible, so you could imagine you got some really big storm guns, or you know, you just be an asshole. You use this with something like Heavenly Aegis, who can't take damage after evolving for the cycle. Pump that guy's attack up and, and be an asshole. And then you have Craven Splendor. This thing got heavily nerfed from the digital game by the way. This used to do basically minus four defense and plus four attack to anything you want. Not anymore. Here it's gonna be, it's a quick now, that's nice. It does yeah. 4 damage and something again, heals you for 1. Not all that bad. It's kind of a bit more, it's 1 extra too, but it's also on quick timing. It's similar to like playing Global Starways. Basically, you, you have a free 4 damage reward, how you want. You know, you're just like, fucking, I'm, I'm blazing breath on steroids, basically. Yeah. Right? And, and anything else you wanna last talk about? Oh yeah, I forgot, to talk, about, I forgot to talk about some other cards. So let's, you know, while we're on Gilded Leaves, we have Gleeds Array, it's a 1 cost. It normally does 2 damage to something, so it's a slower and jealous type. However, if we control Gilgalee's Omen of Craving, we can just simply banish it. One cost, spell, banish. That's crazy. Imagine just having this big guy in a line to go, say like Bahamu or something, right? And this guy gets banished. That's crazy. And then going back to Miura Bay, Omen of 1, we have Enlightenment. It's also a one cost spell. We can give a forward plus one plus one. But if we chose specifically Miura Bang Omega One, that forward gets plus three plus three, going here from a five five or a six six to an eight eight or nine nine. That's already big stats for a five drop, right? He gets a sale, and until end of that turn, he cannot take damage. So he could rush into something because he already has rush, right? And mm -hmm. take no damage. That's nuts. And yeah. to run it all off, we have we were talking about being a Diamond Daredevil helping aggro for control decks or slower decks, Lirio Archer Throne. If you really dislike things like Prime Dragon Keeper or Disco Dragon or Fable Haven or Spell Chain or you know Runecraft in general that's just to do face damage directly to you, Lirio Archer Throne is your girl. She will prevent you from taking face damage until she is dealt with as a 2-5 for 3 costs. She will be a problem. Humpty Dumpty could still nuke her, but you won't take the 3 damage. The only ways that you take face damage, damage for while she's dead is Spell Chain 10, Fiery, and Brace for 4 from Runecraft. That's very few and far in between. Mm -hmm. Lirio will protect you from the majority of face damage. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, ability damage. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Alright. So, we go with that. I think we're good on neutrals at, at this point, yes. Alright, so now we're going to get to the losers in our main points. I think most of the classes, honestly, are more toward the middling. However, that's not an excuse, sadly, for runecraft. I will say, here before, just to give some rune players some hopes, next set is actually going to be arguably rune's best set. Big spoiler. <laughs> but I will say that... Not a lot is going on, despite also having two omens. So Ryo was already Runecraft to begin with, Omen of Truth. 
we shout out Omega Stressing is another import from Portalcraft. You know, we already saw like Portalcraft imports like a Havencraft already with the rights of mm -hmm. Ancient Protector or whatever you call it. We shout out Omega Stressing is another Portalcraft import with her disciples, apostles, servants, etc. Mm -hmm. And the unfortunate part is these are these two strategies are what we call board dependent. And Runecraft is not really known to be board dependent from the get-go. Ryo, you know, the truth archetype was to put a bunch of mages on the board. Yes, we have legacy mages. Thank Merlin from way back in BPO1 Advent of Genesis. Yes, we have those cards. But the problem is, it's hard to benefit if almost everyone has targeted removal to the board. Mm -hmm. And Runecraft was not very good at protecting anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with destruction, you're trying to play this very slow paced game, healing up, opponent takes life turn by turn. Runecraft is not really known to be that great at control. You're going to play control, Havencraft and Dragoncraft are right there, right? Mm -hmm. And Abysscraft, actually. So the problem is, you just make these two new archetypes that generally do not buff legacy Runecraft. So you end up in this awkward spot. The only thing I would give Runecraft right here is Truth Adjudication. It's a very splashable card in both spell chain and dirt because of the fact that it's relatively cheap, it does face damage, it can draw cards, it's, it's very nifty. I will say at least though, there is one card that definitely you should probably get in this set, which is Truth Adjudication. This card <laughs> this, is going to be really key this, this card for Aru in the future. This card, the card is cracked. Well, we're even routine. seeing this. We're even still seeing play in this in Japan too. Oh, yeah, so no, it really shows just, how it's a testament of how yeah. how well it aged, right? You don't need the two mage followers type of skill too, but you have no. the flexibility. It's kind of like having but, but, Olivia. Get, 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 because mages are like all over the place in Rucraft. There's a very there's a non-zero chance that you can just have them on board and be like, F it. We could actually yeah. do everything. But even then too, this is basically just like playing Dark Angel Olivia. But you get you get a, a bit more smaller choices on that. It's a three cost, and, but and you know, it's a spell, so spell chain benefits. Yeah, so that's really good too as well. So that's something I would definitely say is at least a positive from Runecraft, but don't worry, Rune players. Just, next just set's wait. Be the main your choice. time your time is coming. Yeah. So the next two reasons are actually going to be more so kind of the themes we're noticing in this set rather than specific classes. Again, I think every of the other classes are kind of milling overall. We'll probably talk about some key cards in the conclusions or maybe a future video. But first point I'd like to talk about there, I think there, this is something that I was not expecting when I first heard about these cards is that they're kind of introducing a good amount of new archetypes a bit faster than I expected. So here's some examples. I'd say as someone who plays Forest, we know that Hunters is going to be coming in. That's also the specific omen that they have. But also the Puppets archetype has not been really completely developed. We can also say the same thing in Dragoncraft, where Disdain is going to be really popular. And I think that what they're doing is they're throwing a good amount of stuff immediately at the wall. However, they don't see their peaks until maybe later on in the set. So what's your main take on right. what they're kind of doing of throwing so, so, a lot of different things at the wall? Right. So the thing is, with this being almost a term, you have to start bringing the 10 omens. These are the antithesis of the 10 commandments in the Holy Bible, right? And mm -hmm. that means they come with them effectively 10 quote-unquote archetypes. Now, Miura Bang, not real archetype, whatever. And we already mentioned that Abyss Craft actually went up because the archetypes actually define aggro and control mm -hmm. size of the spectrum of Abyss much better. That's great. However, we go into the other moments that we were talking about with the worst example, Runecraft. Because Runecraft was not really meant to be a board based quest from the get go, it was already awkward by going, we require mage cards, we require idol cards. It became mm -hmm. very awkward. You know, at least Mage has some legacy support. I don't, not so much. The idea is that with the two of these, they kind of spice it up and figure out how can I make this work without running my head to the wall. And as mm -hmm. Rika brought up, with Forestcraft, Forestcraft was outside of a field. It's, 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 it's a very, very, very awkward right. uh, transition so phase out, for Forest. Outside of the field cars in past product that re refers specifically to Pixie. We're now introducing Hunters and Puppetry, which have 
almost no legacy support. Like, okay, you have like Archer for Hunter yeah. and like a few other things. But and the funny thing is, too, no... like to get more to get more spoilers, is that Hunters actually get better the next set. So it's like it's a bit very awkward of how they're doing this. They're throwing right. every, all their better pieces later. I don't know if that's like more of a digital game lore or. It, for, like, it's timeline. not necessarily that. How some of these cards work in a digital game somewhat changed, I would say, that much. Okay, okay. I was mostly seeing if it's I'll, like I'll, I'll, timeline I'll, based. I'll, I'll, I'll say one thing. Silas definitely did not do what it did in the vault. Well, yeah, but it, uh, yeah, but but it makes sense because like this is like a traditional TCG versus like a digital game. If that happened in the digital game, that's definitely something uh, another discussion point. But and then you see sword sword gets the the, the thief art. Uh, yeah, I for, think for, it, for, for the user usurpation and bear in mind too not many people like this art type, art type so there's there's okay. that because they don't like how so, it plays that's good for me that's good for us i get like, to our next point it's the fact that the majority of the omen leg archetypes almost require us to splash puppets go in with mid-range forest you know with your elephant and cigarettes you'll be able to stack up into those face pressure plays Usurpation, you have to combine with heroic because you have a lot of three and lower cost followers to unga bunga your opponent. And disdain, disdain either wants to be with discard for extra damage over time or with armed to have that extra defense to afford more of that deal damage to your own allied followers gimmick. Yeah. And because of that, you already have pure omen decks. So yeah, and that's like an example for for someone who who likes the puppets archetype. I don't basically have enough of the pieces. Um, <clears throat> what I basically have to do is just like take all the puppets at the moment, and then add some good stuffs into it. Which right. honestly is fine on the surface, but when that comes class after class after class, it's I don't think that this is a usual healthy style. I feel like I, I like it when archetypes get like a bunch amount of support. And then they basically re reward time. reward us for going in on the archetype versus this archetype's an engine, I guess. Well, not just well, not just not just well, not just that. Think about how Uma Musume was released. You basically got thrown a lot of different stuff. That's gonna age badly over time. But I overall think like if you're gonna give something support an archetype, throw all the pieces at it. Uh, like, as, unless they're going to be like super overpowered. As opposed to your previewing, right? you, you, you remember Yeah, how exactly. We about, remember how we talked yeah. about like, during Flame of Liver King? We had the whole... You had like these introduction cards to chess, to arm, etc. Yeah, exactly. And basically it's uh, like... like, like here's, have, it's a little bit because like, here we're getting like seven cards, give or take, per omen. Except for the neutrals, obviously, because of neutrals. Yeah. But, you get like seven cars and you're like, okay, this is nice, but they, these cars by themselves, a deck does not make. It's the problem. Yeah. I think in terms of how this differs though from set three, is that I think set three threw too much at us. This one is throwing a, a good amount at us still, but I feel like it's more easily dividable versus like, you got Fable stuff, you got anim Shadow vs. Anime stuff, you got... All of these like different supports, right, 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 right. like here, here is like, an actual game. You know, here is just uh, strictly the omens that we are from the omens of the Ken digital set with a little like other things mm -hmm. blasting there for spice. And overall, I just think that this is kind of a bit more better version of how set three probably could have been executed. Yeah, yeah, you know, better. it feels a little more even out versus okay, three classes became very good and everyone yeah. else are just biggling. It's like this. Okay, here's Ghost. Cool. And then they're still going to be playing the regular stuff after this too. And even then too, that's the thing that I like with how you get like a linear type of stuff like in Carfy Banger, for example. You get the little back and forth of what support you can get rather than just super supporting like an archetype and stuff like that. So I, I honestly kind of wish that they did. I just don't like how they did the spread. If they were going to go in all in on an archetype, they go in on two. Chess is a really good example of this because I feel like they threw everything at chess on set three. And then the next support's going to be, I don't know, set eight or nine or something like that. So, um, or 10. It's, it's even, oh, it's even longer. That's unfortunate. Ten, ten, but, okay. Basically, if you're trying to play an actual strictly anime archetype, 
like strictly heroic sword, strictly beast force, strictly ghost abyss, strictly chest room, strictly gemstone haven, etc. If you're looking to play like those like as purely as possible, you have to wait until booster set 10 goes to the arcana, unfortunately. But yeah. until then, you're forced to mismatch. Yeah. I will also say too, I'll probably do a video on this in the future, but I feel like there's just not as much benefit for playing a specific archetype. And that's the thing too. The hybriding, let's say I have Acolyte's Light. I can throw that to any single Haven deck. Yeah, However, the sometimes deck, it just the doesn't Fable, work. Fable, you know, I've seen like that card in like Fable decks in Gemstone decks. Is not We've seen Themis Decree in, <laughs> in, in decks that shouldn't be in it as an example, but um, I digress anyways. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's, 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 I mean, that's the thing about at least theorycrafting creativity is like trying to figure out what you can do with like stuff that are yeah. just not. No, 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 the fact, the fact that this game is not rotation means that we could do some very hilarious things with the earliest course of the game. Yeah, rhinoceros. Anyways, I think that's pretty much it on what we're going to talk about. Just kind of going over the losers right. again. So, so in, conclusion, just really in conclusion, Abyss, Haven, Nuke Show for the most part. They won, you know, if you're an aggro or control main in those two classes, you won hella. Well, honestly, if you're just a fleck, if you have one playstyle over another, you basically won. Everyone else is either middling, like they have the stuff, like you or, know. Or you're basically side grinding, is more correct to say. You're side exactly, yeah. high grinding, you're spicing it up temporarily because you're like, I'm kind of bored with my legacy deck. And then for losers, okay, Ruin, I am so sorry. <laughs> I am so crap, sorry, Ruin. Ruin I did not know. Choose, choose education, pick that up, you don't regret this. <laughs> but honestly, like, it's a good trade off, though. If Ruin players can wait two more months, I think. So I remember because that the least is close to the Grand Shutdown. Anyways, and then basically the direction of how SVE is going. The thing is, we still follow Japan timeline which is basically like the same thing as english at the moment we're noticing though that we're not really as surprised with kind of the way they're doing the direction building but i think it's easy that we know this ahead of time to kind of wrap that if we kind of had a different schedule like i think vanguard in asia circuit they kind of went over the place right in releases so, 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 like, so, so okay in... well, like, actually, actually, that was to simply prevent the gigantic restriction nuke bad was they get in Japan. Exactly. And that's the thing too, what what could be scary is you're flipping all the way around and saying and that, yeah, that's no, no, no. English no, technically right took now. different directions with service of all you know again. The Shenlong hit came one set before for us. Yeah. The fact that Uma Musume got a temporary ban you know again, watch our video on how does the unhit affect Oma Musume moving forward over there? And overall, it's just the directions that they just take is a bit crazy, but at least they're trying to do something a bit more stable as we see sets moving forward. So well, that's sure. the thing. I think my last conclusion is that this really does feel like set three all over again. It's, it's I'm, set I, three, I, the, but the biggest we're thing learning I am, some lessons, right? Yeah, we're learning some. Yeah, exactly. And that's what happened between Uma Musume, Uma Musume and Isle Master. That's a that's a future topic for later. Uh, but I will say, though, is that, I mean, I'm really curious on how people will think a month into Omen. Because Omen's a really popular set, especially in the digital game, especially for, like, those traditional players. However, something that happened with set three is that a lot of people got fatigued. Maybe that's, like, post-tournament thing. The thing is, is that the only tournaments that really are, like, on the table are for the buy cards and the Dark Alice. Right, which means so, that this is kind of like a pseudo warm-up set, if anything. Exactly. It's, it's, it's not really, I wouldn't say it's a casual thing, because you're still, the buy cards are really going to be Whereas with BPO, like Green Flame of Everything, which are still in the middle of regional and secondary season. That was for the BSFs. Worlds was the Uma Musume. So that's some perspective, though, for people that are curious about how we kind of feel the trajectory is going to go. Usually the thing you always want to do is have soaring up at the moment, but with the way the tournament structure is, is that I'm really curious to see how people think of this set going into middle of release, because I feel like this set could honestly fatigue people. Just because I, I, I could see it, okay. I could see it, but yeah, uh, because yeah, we'll, we'll see like how long this open a release tournament format lasts as well, right? No, people yeah. are kind of predicting, oh, is your first gonna be like 30 40 dollars? And it turns out mm -hmm. she did become that way because one, open a happens, there was like all these extra interference in the market, and two, mm -hmm. we're less controlled 
Or you can get Cabanas. I will also say too, that's the thing that set three didn't also have is they didn't have a lot of different options. I just feel like I don't know if people really want to test or build new decks one I, month in, but I, we'll I still could see. see the idea. I could see the idea. Most I feel I, like I, most I, I, people I, 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 spice spice stick. I would not be surprised if someone tries to make some sort of hybrid repost fable deck. Honestly, no, that's the thing too. It's just more so who wants to actually do it too. Shout outs if you do it though. I would love to see it. I think English is more open to than Japan for sure. But that's the thing too, is like I don't think many people really net deck a lot in this game just because like, at least in the West, because I think the big thing is that I it's a lot of people's curiosity factor, but there's also again not really any super big tournaments that you have to compete in right. at the moment. But we're definitely less competitive than the Japanese overall, I feel. Yeah, and, and and you're not really aiming for something huge like a world's title shot on this too with this set. So that's the main conclusion I guess we're gonna be going on this for too. Sure. Anyways, that's it for the video. We'll probably have some stuff. I think with this period with BSF ending recently too, I think I'm gonna start probably doing it's kinda like deck profiles, but I might actually try to do it's like day one deck. We'll see. I think what I really wanna do is I think you'll probably see it on Friday, but I might try to do day one decks. I All actually right, let's go, let's go, let's let's go. Too. <gasps> Yeah, it'll, it'll really challenge my uh, theory crafting thing too. Even though I don't play a lot of the archetypes, it's a good introduction for what people could bring to the table. But for sure, for anyways, sure. thank you all for joining in. We'll see you all in this video. Continue to embrace the darkness, and good luck to everybody who's going for open A and also for the shop challenges. So yep, uh, too. Bye bye. Gemstone was in the anime. I'm just, <laughs> I, I didn't realize that till now. Wow. Okay.